Welcome back and thanks for tuning in to episode 10 of Lab Padres Starbase Weekly Updates. Now let's dig in. Starting things off this week, Falcon 9 roared into Florida skies with a new batch of Starlinks, expanding the orbital constellation by another 53 satellites, further increasing the network's global coverage. Over in Boca Chica, early in the morning of the 6th, a tank dome was sleeved in front of the build site tents. The first building of the new permanent star factory has been moving ever closer to completion, one beam at a time. Starship 24, the next vehicle in the lineup and orbital test candidate, made significant progress towards completion this week. Once the nose section was moved to the side, the aft section was moved to the high bay. Later, the aft section was connected to the high bay bridge crane and shifted towards the back of high bay. Booster 7 continued to aid in the testing of the orbital launch mount, serving as a guinea pig for the quick disconnect system. Things didn't appear to go perfectly though, with a few repeated attachments before the crew seemed satisfied. On Sunday, Ship 24's nose cone section was lifted and placed onto the waiting aft section, completing the stacking of the latest Starship prototype. That evening, the Raptor installation platform was relocated to Pad A to the base of the launch tower. On Monday, Ship 24 was seen rotating back and forth on the turntable in High Bay as the two newly joined sections were welded together. The rotating continued intermittently throughout the day as SpaceX's robotic welders continued their work. Meanwhile, during pad clearing operations at its launch site, B-7 was seen venting ahead of cryotest. Once the pad was finally cleared, the orbital tank farm came to life. With everything ready for B-7's first cryotest following weeks of repair, cryoload began. The booster was fully filled with cryogenic fluid and then detanked and depressurized, all of which appeared to go smoothly. Tuesday morning, back in Florida, Bob Toad just read the instructions out to sea for the Starlink 4-15 launch. At Starbase, Ship 16 was moved out of the rocket garden. After a quick journey to the build site, it became the first vehicle to enter the Mega Bay. At the launch site, crews continued to work on the cryogenic piping in the launch tower, removing a temporary spacer from the LOX line. A new butterfly valve was seen being lifted into the same area a short time later. More rotation was seen from Ship 24 on the high bay as the robots continued welding the Starship. Tuesday also saw the first installation of insulation and external cladding on the new Star Factory building. The yellow insulation was rolled onto the steel framing and white siding went on top. Meanwhile, back at the launch site, new sections of prefabricated cryopiping were lifted and installed in the launch tower. Back at Port Canaveral, Doug returned to port towing a shortfall Gravitas with B-1058 following the launch of Starlink 4-17 mission. With the rapid launch cadence SpaceX has maintained this year, the Starlink constellation is steadily gaining additional capability and Starlink service is now available in 36 markets around the world. Tuesday afternoon, Ship 24 was again rotating in High Bay as the welding was wrapping up. That evening, the Raptor installation platform was moved further away from the orbital launch mount. Back at High Bay, with the welding finally finished, Ship 24 was lifted off the turntable and moved to the side. On Wednesday morning, Ship 20 left the launch site likely for the last time. The Starship made its way down Highway 4 to its new home. Let's watch as Ship 20 makes its way to the rocket garden. Soon after the move, the launch table booster quick disconnect underwent testing at the launch site. After reconnecting, we saw what seemed to be a full speed disconnect from the booster. With the retraction test complete, the booster quick disconnect, or BQD, was reattached to booster 7. A short time later, the launch pad was cleared 
and B-7 was ready for its second cryo test in less than 48 hours. Once again, tank farm activity picked up, soon followed by venting from the launch mount, and then the vehicle was fully filled with cryogenic fluid. Like before, we saw detanking and depressed venting. This time, however, a few rings worth of cryo was pumped back into the vehicle. Next, we saw the first test of the quick disconnect during an active cryo test as the BQD retracted before reconnecting for final detanking. A possible leak from a flex pipe and an odd vent from the side of the mount were seen later on towards the end of testing. After the testing was complete, workers were seen inspecting this area of the mount, possibly indicating this venting was some type of failure. Thursday, work continued on the Star Factory as additional insulation and siding went up outside as other crews worked inside. Over at Mega Bay, the first prefabricated roof panel was lifted and installed by Buckner's LR11000. Back in Florida, B-1058 was lifted and placed on the transporter for its trip to SpaceX's refurbishment facilities. At Starbase, Booster 7 was once again connected to SpaceX's LR11000 crane in preparation for its removal from the orbital launch mount. And finally, for this week, the Raptor installation platform was moved for the third time in one week, ending up at Pad B. And there you have it, another action-packed Starbase weekly update brought to you by Lab Padre. If you like what you saw today, hit the subscribe button and make sure you leave a comment. See you next week and thanks for watching. Lab Padre out.